Well, once again, guys, the FMCSA has changed things up with the hours of service to benefit the country, as they always do, not to the benefit of truck drivers in the long term, just a short respite to say, hey, do what you got to do, make some money, help the country out. We'll put the screws to you again in a few weeks or months or whenever it comes about. So I guess that what we're going to have to do now is delve into this a little bit deeper. I could see that if they're loosening up regula regulations for people that are delivering cleaning supplies and carting off dead bodies, I shouldn't have said that, or bringing food to market or food from farm to slaughterhouses or whatever, and I would assume that's what this is going to be about. But hey, I, I, I just can't. Oh, maybe oil delivery too. They like to do the oil delivery, household oil. We'll see. So I'm gonna I'm gonna dig into it and uh, and we'll see where it goes. Okay. So right off the top, this is is from the ATA, our vaunted enemy, to their people. And what it says is the FMCSA has issued an emergency proclamation suspending federal hours of service regulations for interstate operations. Motor carriers and drivers remain responsible for ensuring that drivers are receiving sufficient rest and are not operating fatigued. Hmm. I always put the blame back on you, driver. ATA will continue to monitor any emergency proclamations and will notify ATA members as soon as anything becomes available. For more information, blah, 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 ATA. Additionally, Congress and the President are negotiating an initial emergency legislation package, which is scheduled to be taken up in the House soon, most likely today. ATA legislature staff are receiving the current packages and negotiations, and an update will be shared later today with a summary of that package. There is also discussion of future legislations that could be taken up as early as next week. Areas like sick leave, small business assistance, food assistances, and other areas for under review. The situation is fluid and changing daily, if not hourly, but we are tracking your calls, blah, blah, blah. All right, that's the carrot they're holding out for you, saying, hey, maybe if you get sick, we can do something to help you out. You know, it's a carrot. All right, now, let, now I'm going to look and I'm going to read a little bit deeper and see how this affects everyone. Okay, so currently the emergency declaration waiver and exemption and permits is for Tennessee, North Carolina, Alabama, and Washington State. Washington State is getting ready to expire, but believe me, all of this is just going to ramp up. The Federal Motor Carry Safety Administration is according to the following states that have declared emergency declarations. We recommend you check each state's website, okay, if you are interested in more details, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we come down here to the Southern Service Center. Uh, there's a effective 3-3 three, three, and it's when it started and it's going to go until April the 2nd shall remain in effect for the duration of the emergency as defined in blah 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 right so it's going to stay in effect Alabama it's been going on since since February the 18th who would have figured that one out shall remain in full force and effective until they changed their mind and tell, tell us otherwise. North Carolina started on February the 7th, expires 3-7. 3-7, hell, that's over with, ain't it? Damn, I'm, I'm behind apparently. Washington expires on the 31st. To provide vital supplies and transportation service to the desired area of the United States, emergency declarations may be issued by the president, governor, president, or the governor of the state, or FMCSA. These declarations trigger the temporary suspension of certain federal safety regulations, safety, including hours of service, for motor carriers and drivers engaged in specific aspects of the Emergency Relief Act for the actual emergency regulations. Oh, so drivers responding to provide direct assistance to an emergency. Okay, that makes sense. These exemptions will, when in effect, not only apply, they do not exempt drivers, carriers from the requirements 
relating to CDL, like drug testing and such, you know, regular safety stuff, right? Wow, I mean, it just goes on and on if I look at it here. But I'm not going to read you all of this, this uh, claptrap because you're going to have to read it yourself and see if it applies to you. Uh, I'm sure you know if it applies to you. But this is going to this is going to take off and go into every every state and town around is is going to be affected by this pretty soon. Except for Alaska who apparently doesn't have anything going on with the coronavirus. Thank bless you Alaska. All right. So I just thought y'all might be interested in to know that that's what's coming our way. They're going to need us to help them battle the problem. Right, we'll be we'll be happy to help them out, right? But where does it go from there? What happens when we get sick? Are we going to, have to be stuck in the truck for for two weeks? Probably. And that's not such a hard thing for me, but it might be for some of you. I know that you personally, like I, would not rather run into any affected area, but we have to do what we got to do because. We're the heroes of the day, the first responders, right? They don't ever give us first responder status, do, do, do they? You're the first one at the wreck. You're the first one offering assistance. You're the first one treating for shock, right? You're always the first one there. And now we'll be there once again. Thank you, truck drivers of the world. Thank you for coming to our rescue. It's your job. Yours is not to question why, yours is but to do or die. Hey, I'm not bitter. It's, it's my country. I want to help it in any way I can. If giving up our life to save up, to help save other people, that's a very small price to pay in my opinion. But I don't want it to be in vain with our open border policy and more stuff coming in every day. And it's just going to keep coming in across our southern border. And, and y'all know I, I'm pretty liberal when it comes to that kind of stuff, right? The only time you're going to hear liberal out of my mouth. All right, you guys have a spectacular day. Bye-bye.